The power wedge for ya! Whoa! <laughs> and one leg just flopping around. Helicopter is finding some gear for some followers. They're gonna build a helipad. Here's his gear. Can't quite see it. I'm zoomed in as far as I can. Be able to see it now. Some more blocks to do yet, and some steep ground. How steep the hillside is. How steeper that looks, really. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, I've been to camp just over three weeks, and I've never broken this many axes in a shift. I've brought four axes in, which I don't even bring that many axes in normally. Easier to just bring in two or three. Brought four in just because because I wanted two big ones, two little ones. And I've broken my little one, I split that one. And then my big one, my other big one, it's all crooked. The handle's all crooked to the head. Uh, because if you look inside here, this end here gets smushed down and then and I'll show you. Like this part here, the handle gets all crooked and it comes out like this because the ax is designed to be chopping, not for being hit on this end. And so the, yeah, the handle is all crooked and because this end here gets all squished in. So it's not even designed for what we use it for. And in this ax, right there, it's already starting to split. You see that? It's starting to split. That's my last big ax I got in camp, so I wanna try and Save it if I can, just try and get the rest of the shift in. So I'm gonna tape it up with hockey stick tape. <laughs> I don't know how well it's gonna hold up, but it's better than nothing. Okay, we'll see if that does it. Help out from splitting anymore. Okay, here we go. Here's that big fur. She's a nice one, she's pretty big. And I got it all cleaned out. All this small stuff all down. Whole hole opened up for it, so I'm gonna lay it right in here, right above that stump is a plan. I'm hoping it just doesn't bounce over that, but we'll see. It might. Uh, this wasn't intended. It was just happened to work like that, this log here, but I put this one in and then had a little scaffolding log going over. Let me just turn that down. I just cut a little notch in the log there. There's a hole I cut in for the other log here. Yeah, so I've debarked a little bit. Normally I don't do it that much, but it's just uh, it's nice when you want to dog in. These dogs actually stick in. But, so here we go. And there was a, the, this tree here was sitting right there, so I had to cut that down just so I can get my back cut down lower. Yeah, right there is where I want to put it. Okay, let's get to it then.
You can get those high-vis jackets I was wearing at woodboss.ca. Right over there, woodboss.ca. One of a kind, can't get them anywhere else. Okay, I'll show you my undercut. That's just fairly solid. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. Two ways down there. Okay. Right on to the back cut. I still have to be careful because I got these two little trees in my way. So if I can't reach around the far side because that tree's in the way, I have to cut a bit of a window out. I don't think I will, but I might. I might need to. But that wind is cold. The sun is warm, but that wind is cold. I'm sweaty too, so I'm starting to cool down. I'll oh, tough it out for a bit. I might warm up yet. I'm gonna put a stick in that far side. So I can see. Well, it's way over there. Be out of here. Hey, I just let you know I'm gonna just drop out to drop that fur now. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Just give my partner a heads up. He's not that he's. It's not that he's close. It's just 
uh, courtesy, you know, just letting you know I got one going his way. Here's just a tall one, and you know. Don't do it all the time, but <clears throat> just so you don't startle the guy, you know, if he's two and a half tree lengths away, something like that, you know, if you got a big one. In a bit, I think there's a little bit in the far side I just couldn't reach. But try wedging it, sometimes wedging it and we'll just get it to go. Yeah, the wind's died right down now. It's quite warm now. for you you got it quite I got it buried all the way to the end this hasn't lifted it up enough let's try my other one it'll go it'll go Oh yeah! You.
Yeah, like other holding water left. That's what it was. I would have had to cut a window out if the wedge didn't work. But it did bounce over the log, or that stump as I figured. But it stayed right out. Well, the top broke, but all the good, valuable parts of the log stayed right out. If you look here, this is all rotten wood, it's punky. You can tell by the color. Here's a solid wood right here. It's the only good solid wood that was left. It was all punky rotten wood. Look how far my tape. Look how far it goes down. Shouldn't do that. Shouldn't go down that far. It's because it's rotten. Yeah. Oh man, the butt's up in the air, but at least it's hung up on a stump right there. This makes it a little safer for me. Okay, I'll fuel up, I'll go down there, we'll buck that. Oh, that was a fun one. Biggest one of the of the morning so far. Oh, that was fun. Okay, I'll fuel up and we'll head down there. Perfectly straight, oh, right in the sun there. <laughs> perfectly straight cut. Almost perfect anyway. Yeah, so what I wanted to do, I wanted to cut the top off of this while it was up in the air, because if I buck the rest of the log and it rolled down the hill, I might not have a chance to just buck the brake. So I did it right now while it was easy. Now I'll go and take these limbs off, go to the butt, Probably have to take a, um, a butt cut off to get to cut off that rot, and then uh, then I can measure. Um, I could a log out of it. So that's what I'm gonna do.
Okay, so my plan is, because the butt is hanging in the air, I can't reach where I need to cut it, to cut that rod out. So I marked it, the saw, taped it from there, so 12.5, and then the rest is a nice long, at least 10 meters, I'm guessing, the, the, all the way up to where I buck the brake is at least 10 meters. And then I'll try and buck the end after I buck this piece. I think it still might be in the air. If not, they'll have to buck it down the landing. This is nowhere for me to reach where I need to cut it. And then I gotta stand here in all these limbs. Oh, I zoomed in, oops. So I gotta stand in here, all these limbs are, there's my cut. So I have to make sure when this thing rolls down the hill, it doesn't grab any branches and drag them down and me with it. So I'll have to, Make, a, make sure it's nice and safe, buck everything so when this tree rolls down the hill, yeah, I don't get dragged along with it. So let's do that right now. I might have to stand on some branches. Looks like it's a, the ground is a way down there, looks like. Looks like I stand on a stump or something. What am I standing on? Oh yeah. Right here. Okay, so it's just branches. Doesn't seem very safe. Okay, I'll do some cutting here. Brushing out. Oh, 
safe enough there's the ground right there right where I'm standing I'm up on the branches up in the air anything that's up here that's going underneath that log I've cut it so this log doesn't drag stuff down the hill that's above me so like that piece there is going underneath the log I could drag the whole log and me with it especially this one here it goes right underneath the log it's just cut everything out there's the ground way down there so I should be safe enough now should be okay and then I can jump back here if anything happens <sighs> hmm I need to put the camera on something sturdy here I just had to fix my tripod and camp last night and I broke one of the legs on it. And now I just found I broke another leg. So the tripod's all kind of sloppy and one leg just flopping around. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Come on now. Get this. There we go. Here we go.
me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Even bucking is dangerous. Yeah. I knew it was going to drop fast when it drops. Amazing how fast gravity can be. Took my saw with it. But now it's nice and level too. Look at that. There's my cut. Right in a good spot to buck too because I can stand on the ground and it's right near a pivot point, right? That's a pivot point. All this is way up in the air. And if you look at the butt, there's a pocket of rot right there. But there's lots of good wood right around here, eh? So I did a 6.3. I might be able to salvage something out of it. And then, even if they can't, oh, that rot should clear up because it's, it's a big tree, but also there's quite a bit of rot in there. So it should clear have cleared up for sure by the time we get to 6.3. But I'm confident they'll, there's a, a, a enough good solid wood in there. I have to check my uh, button card and tell me what the allowable amount of rot is on the butt. It's way up at my bag right now. But regardless, it's the only safe place for me to buck. So this is where it's going to be. And it just happens to be a 6.3. So it works out pretty good. Put you guys right over here.
Yeah, my cuts didn't quite line up because I was on the low side. I could tell my cut was angled a bit. So I was on the low side, I corrected it and I came back up. I just, it can be tricky sometimes. You got so much to cut. If your cut is slightly off the far side, by the time you get all the way around, it's a lot farther off. <clears throat> there it goes though. Especially if the log's on a slight or it's on an angle, it's not perfectly level it's on an angle and you're trying to get a perfect 90 degrees across the cut it's, it's tough because you're eyeballing it and it's sometimes, sometimes you're off but so it goes most important thing is is did it safely yeah just knowing what to do and assuming the worst case scenario and plan your cuts according to a worst case scenario. And then it was, of course, there's a little bit of, what do you call it? Um, oh, what's that term? I <laughs> can't think of it now. Calculated risk. It's like, oh, the odds in my favor, this won't probably won't happen. So, you know, you'll do it. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how confident you are in your skill set sometimes the risk factor is just too much for you but for another guy you know it's not right 
you want to go out of your comfort zone. I've done tons of crazy stuff that I shouldn't have in the past. I think everyone does. You kind of got to be kind of crazy to be a faller on this type of ground. <laughs> Every day is a adrenaline rush. Okay. So all I got is some little stuff. Let me just get up on this springboard of the fur here. Back up at the fur. Fish my tank off. Get in this pocket, little stuff right here. And then I'm gonna turn down my low point down that way. Low point right there. Because the other side, it's higher up. And uh, I'm walking away from my partner over there. It's going on really good. Yeah, everything's going quite well right now. Quite happy how everything's turning out. Okay, see you guys in a bit. I got a bunch of small stuff. Nothing worth filming. And, uh, you know, I take a few minutes out of the day to film. Film something that's interesting, but, you know, I got to stay at production pace, right? So I'll see you guys in a bit. Or, or tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see.